Muse Canada is a new arts and entertainment media connection and support network. Skip the algorithms of social media and connect with other entertainment professionals across Canada. Sign up today for just $5 a month. Or you guys can use promo code FUNKYMOOSE2021 and get 10% off membership. First things first, this is not an interview. Yeah, we're just hanging out. It's just a podcast hang. That's right. It's a long form conversation. That's all it is. That's cool. And I just, I had a couple friends make fun because I've always been really good at, at not let's not call it an interview, but just like, I was like, yeah, I don't really know what it's about. Like, I guess they just want to like talk about me for like an hour. And they're like, that should be no problem, Rami. <laughs> that should be <laughs> no problem at all. That's exactly what this is going to be. Welcome to episode 91 of The Sit Down. I'm Rami Mays, the esteemed guest. And uh, I am a musician. I also am a senior producer for a music company called Cripside Concerts. And I'm all around just a great gal to talk to. So I hope you enjoy this episode. Awesome. Oh, perfect. I like the, the extra words in there, too. To... Yeah, because <laughs> we usually ask guests to, to do this, and then they say what they have to say. And then we get into and it. And then we get into That's it. perfect. But so a description is good. I, I literally could not have done that any better. So thank you. <laughs> I used to be in radio, so maybe I've got a little ad lib in me. Oh, right on. Yeah, yeah. And welcome to the show. Um, Thanks. We appreciate you joining us this afternoon. For the episode, so we found out about you through Aspen Beverage at Skull Creek Studios. Yeah. Great guy. First of all, he has the greatest name ever. No doubt. Beverage. I was like, yeah, the first time I met Aspen, I was like, so is that your porn name or, (laughs) you know? But yeah, no, Aspen's Aspen's awesome. He said, yes, of course it's his porn name. Yeah, of course he does. (laughs) Everyone's got to have a porn name. You think Rami Mays is my real name? (laughs) (laughs) It is actually. (laughs) Nice. Um, Yeah, no, Aspen's awesome. I met him through uh, when League of Wolves were on tour and they came through Winnipeg. And I'm, and I know you, you had that episode with Aspen and Liet. Right. And since, so Liet and I are old friends. And so Liet was now in League of Wolves and they were coming through and I had this apartment in Osborne Village here in Winnipeg and, uh, just like I always had like these like awesome drunken parties after the bar and like there's a piano and there's tons of instruments. So we all got together and they stayed at my place for the night and we just partied pretty hard. And, um, and Aspen and I actually wrote like a piano song together oh, that we never good. fully finished. He said he finished it later. It was about his partner, his beautiful wife or girlfriend. I'm not sure. Um, but it had her name in it and it was this really beautiful song we wrote and uh, we just clicked Aspen and I clicked like you know sometimes you just meet somebody and you know how it is in this industry you know it's like sometimes it's a four minute meet but you're just like bro we're gonna be bros you know That's so exactly, yeah yeah for I yeah. can completely relate as soon as I met like just the first time we got to talk to him that's the yeah. same vibe that we got off of. yeah just an absolute sweetheart yeah you betcha yeah so I appreciate him passing my name on so that's nice so right what on. you're telling me is you've never heard of me before. I, honest <laughs> to God. Honest to God. I did not know who you were. I did know we had heard about uh, curbside concerts prior to you and I connecting, though. Right. Um, I, I'm trying to remember where we had heard. I want to say that was through Matt Blaze, if I'm not mistaken. And this was yeah, I don't know who that ago. is, but let's just But I mean, curbside concerts. We've done really well in the last year and a half. So it's oh, really I, the, the, I, oh, the name I is out there. Brandon. That's that makes Brandon more sense. Baker. Brandon Baker. Oh yeah, Brandon Baker. He's the associate yeah. producer of mine. Yeah. Yeah, that's where we would have heard from it. Were yeah. you were interviewing him for Electric Religious? Yes, twice. we've had him on the. He's been on the show twice now, and I love him. Actually, Electric Religious just played in Saskatoon a few weeks back, and we got to we got to meet him in person there, and we hung yeah, he played him. at the basement right with North Sound. Yes, yep. ma'am. Yeah, I helped him. Well, I didn't help him promote it. I just, I just was excited about that because I love the basement. I love that venue. I've played there lots, and uh, and also I just like Brandon's band, and I like Brandon. And the North Sounds also on the curbside concerts roster, so I did a little bit of push for it as well, just because. Hell yeah! Just the nice thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. Spoiler alert: We've got them on the show in December, I think. Dun 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 dun. dun. So it's not really a spoiler alert. That's more like a promo. Yeah, I guess so. I'm I'm terrible (laughs) at promos. But yeah, 
taken over the you interview, know, guys. So uh, where, when you grew up, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> what kind of diapers were you wearing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, t- can you tell me a little bit more about the curbside concerts? Like how did that start every, and on just from start to where we are today? Yeah, it's an awesome story actually. Cause Matt Masters, I don't know if you've heard of him. He's a sort of cowboy troubadour, uh, musician out of Calgary. Um, his real name is Matt Bergener, but, uh, he goes under Matt Masters when he performs. He's an old friend of mine and uh, just always like, always doing always like he's run for like a political position as well. Like he's just all over the place, like figuring out what he can do to make life better. You know, he's just a really wonderful guy, super entrepreneur. So he actually, when COVID started, he just decided that he wanted, like, you know, it was kind of like no music for musicians, no music for music lovers. Let's figure something out. So what he did was he just got, he just built like this makeshift um, sort of stage on the, on his car. And just drove and offered his neighborhood like shows, right? So he would just go like to curbside, pull up and perform with like a battery powered speaker. And he, he was starting to get gigs that way and it started picking up. And then he was starting to run into a situation where he couldn't keep up with all the offers. So he hired more people, his, his buddies, you know, to do these shows. And then I think he was him and his wife just said, holy shit, I think we have, a, we have something. Mm-hmm. Like we have something here. And so they started curbside concerts and that was in March. And by June, he had asked me, he called me up and he said, you know what, what I have going on here in Calgary is really dope. And I think maybe you would be able to forefront something like that in Manitoba and especially out of Winnipeg. So I took that challenge on. And from there, we've created this company that's from BC to Ontario. And we've employed musicians. We've get, we paid out over a, like a quarter of a million dollars to musicians. And we've booked well over a thousand shows. And, uh, And we brought music to communities that wouldn't have otherwise had it through COVID. And we actually found, because we did think for a while that this was like a COVID company. And then we're like, what's going to happen when? When COVID's done. When COVID's over, which is funny because nobody was like looking to like, like everyone was like, I can't wait till it's over. And I'm like, shit, when it's over, what are we going to (laughs) do? I hope COVID stays. No, I'm just (laughs) kidding. (laughs) No, but but we realized we had hit this whole new demographic of people who were just like music lovers who didn't particularly even want to go to the bar and wait in line and, you know, wait in line for drinks and have to drive with, you know, or get a cab or, you know, and go into the city. A lot of the people, a lot of the places we, we perform at are like rural, just outside the city. And, and a lot of people want to just have it with their kids there and their dog and their elders and the people that, you know, want to enjoy music too. Right. Yeah. So we found this whole new demographic of people who really, we just realized it didn't have to be a COVID business at all. It was just, it was just a really good business. And then we turned it corporate as well. So we do a lot of corporate company bookings. We do like uh, festivals like when they couldn't have it, we put on festivals, sort of safe festivals for them right. outdoors and things like that. And so we ended up becoming this really great company that's thriving and is looking really good. So we're pretty excited about it. Hell yeah. Props to Hell you yeah. for doing that yeah. for sure. Is there, and then you do have, are you in charge of something like that? That's going around in Saskatchewan here too? Yep. So I am the producer. I was originally a producer for all of it. And then we hired Brandon Baker, who we just spoke about, to -hmm. take over BC and Alberta. So and I do Saskatchewan, Manitoba and Ontario. And we're always looking to expand it, but we just want to maximize these provinces first. So uh, we've had offers like in in the US and in Australia, and we're just like, we're not there yet. We need to focus, you know, Mm -hmm. but we're always looking to expand. And I I do predict that this is going to be something ideally that isn't just called Curbside Concerts Canada, that could be called Curbside Concerts International or something like that. Hell yes. But you're also doing the territories, don't you? Well, we have an artist in the Northwest Territories. And so I have that area, but we haven't done much work there yet. So we do have an artist um, up there that is willing to perform, but we just haven't really explored the area or really maximized that or or promoted there yet. So how does that work? When I, if I want artists to show up here I, I phone or book or whatever yeah it's like it's all through the and website I, it's super easy and then i pay for it and then whoever shows up shows up no you can choose we have a roster page for each area so you go on it's basically like skip the dishes for yep. music it's a live music delivery service so you you know you it's just like the way skip the dishes you go on the website you choose the food you want which would be the artist you choose the date and time you want it and you pay for it and then it's delivered to you. So that's kind of how it works. 
the the whoever shows up is is more like my friends like can i have oh you mean whoever shows up to your home for the yeah. for the actual it's yeah it's it's you could have it by yourself you could have it with one friend you could have it with up to whatever the capacity was at the time through covid 10 25 whatever it was now it's whatever you can just have a freaking huge party and have them come you know play your backyard now instead of the curbside at a bonfire party you know and right. so um yeah it's 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 up to you i mean you could have, it's up to you how you want your guests or where you want that exact concert location. And um, yeah, and you just go and choose the artist and we, if they're available, we book them for you and it's just that easy. You should do something for- Well, hell well, yeah, you should. I, do I, a funky moose. Do you like a big I funky would, moose? I would, but this is- I, Well, we are planning a festival in August of next year, right, currently. Yeah. Um, but what I have a question is that what would stop, let's say, the price was like 500 bucks or whatever to have uh, Teresa Sakurka come play in at Bellevue Hall, right? Through right. curbside uh, concerts. Now, right. what is stopping me from promoting that and selling tickets? Like, you, there's got to be something. That's an excellent there. question because we don't promote, we don't allow that. Yeah, exactly. So that's... Yeah, we don't allow ticket sales because we don't want to undervalue the artist. So if you were going to sell tickets in the first place and make more money than you would have by purchasing the curbside, then that money should go to the artist. 100%. You know what I mean? Yep. With whatever division you decide is your own promotion, right? So yeah. we we don't allow ticket sale events. We just, you know, it's, you can't sell tickets to a curbside concert. Right. But there are exceptions in different in different situations that we are willing to make if it's like they you're only you're only making you know x amount of money at the door just to cover your expenses and then everything else goes to the artist that can work you know because we the artists take yep. tips and things like that yep. but realistically yeah that is that is exactly what we're trying to not have happen we don't want to undervalue yeah, the exactly. artist by by having you pay for them at one price and then making more money than they could have made that means we can have way more concerts in Bellevue now. Yeah, if we go through I love it. that's that's kind of where i'm going so this podcast just turned into like a wicked sales deal that i'm going to make right now and then we're just <laughs> going to like solve that's this whole i'm going to be able to make like a 14 15 concert package with you and yes yeah the only problem is great. that we're going we're going into winter now so we have to figure out where well, we can yeah, do well, we are doing home. indoors now as well now yeah, because I, there are certain that. exceptions for indoors oh i love it because of the because of the allowances now uh we, we, we are starting to do indoor festivals or indoor concerts. Right. And even we just did a, we just signed some, a big contract with, um, well, I shouldn't say names of anything. So, but it's, uh, it's basically indoor malls across the country. So there's, you know, a series going to happen. So it's in the mall, you know, with a curbside concert. And so there's like a series. So it's like, it really can go anywhere really this our our offering so it could be an into but you know what i like the outdoor festival idea better i like i like performing outdoors and i like the whole curbside concert outdoor thing myself because i'm on the roster as well mm -hmm. but by all means we need to employ the artists through the winter too so i'm just happy that we're allowed to do indoors this year as well oh man this is i like props to you guys applause to you guys for yeah. doing that i love the idea thank you I, yeah I, we're so proud You've got my we just actually we got nominated for four um, Western Canadian Music Awards for our industry in, in the industry categories of like impact in live music, impact in, in I don't know, there are four of them. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but it was pretty it was great because we were like up against places like, you know, um, like the National Music Center in Banff and like or whatever it was and like and the like Star Starlight Room in Edmonton and things like that where mm -hmm. the places that have established themselves for years and years and we were just happy. I mean, we didn't win, <laughs> yeah. but we were nominated in four categories and that was just to show how much, you know, to us, it showed yeah. how much we were making an impact. So yeah, yeah. hundred percent. Oh, I love yeah. it. I love it. That's exciting. It is. Exciting. Yeah. I'm pretty happy to be on board with something that it, it aligns with all my skill sets and it also aligns with my morals and, and what my intentions are for, you know, being I'm 46 now. Right. So I know, I know. I look younger. I know. Just say it. I was, uh, anyway, I thought you were gonna say it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, <laughs> just kidding. I'm just fucking around. No, but so I'm 46 now, and so my my intention in my music career and like becoming something and building my career has kind of subsided. You know, I kind of it's taken a little bit of a sidestep to the to me sort of trying to use this knowledge and help other musicians and get other musicians work. And it's always kind of been that way a little along the way, but now I get to full time really right. put that into it. So it's really, it's a very exciting opportunity for me to put something th together that I'm really passionate about. 
I love it. It's you're getting me fired up here. Yeah, my gears. Yeah, me too. I love it too. Yeah. Um. So yes, you are. You do perform music as well. Like you said, I you do. are on the roster. Yes. Um, and I love your music, by the way. Oh, thanks, Mark. I like my music too. <laughs> <laughs> How can you give us a little backstory on like when you started being a musician and and that whole thing? Sure. Um, well, it's like, okay, so I, I always loved music, but didn't really realize that how much I did. It was only in retrospect that I realized, you know, those moments as a kid when I'm listening to the radio on my ghetto blaster and like grabbed a hairbrush and was like lip syncing Joan Jett in the mirror. Like uh, right. I didn't realize how much that was actually going to be who I meet me, you know, I, I actually like, so I, but I, in, yeah, in retrospect, I always loved it. But when it was, when I was about, um, I guess, 14 years old, I went to a, I went to a, canoe camp every year it was, it's out in lake of the woods ontario and you go on these long canoe trips with the, and you have like two out trippers that take you on these trips and this one woman leah Steele, she was playing she brought a guitar right she was just like you know the kumbaya stuff for the campfire like wonderful tonight by eric clapton or whatever those kind of songs right. and it was i just i just my mind was like i need i want to do that and it, it was a four-week canoe trip and the whole time i was just like drooling like trying to get her to teach me chords and things like that so when I got back, I, I just like straight to my mom, mom, you got to buy me a guitar. And so she bought me this like $150 Fiesta guitar at this little shop on McPhillips. And it was such a piece of shit, but I loved it. You know, I just loved it. And so I started writing songs because I was always a writer. I was always writing like poetry or, or short stories and things like that. So I put it into song. And, uh, and then when I was about 15, I was, there was this place in Winnipeg called the Blue Note, and it's a pretty famous place, actually, the Blue Note Cafe. It was no, um, I think apparently, <clears throat> yeah, so the Blue Note, and I mean, like, people like Neil Young played there all the time, and there's rumor that that's why he named, his, like, the Blue Notes, you know, and stuff like that. But, right. but like, I saw James Cotton, and I saw, like, oh, my God, every big band that came through Winnipeg knew, <clears throat> like, no matter what caliber they were, knew to come down to this little, like, dive to rock and roll and get on stage and party at after, and I was, like, literally 15 years old and I wasn't even supposed to probably be there most of the time but I was and um and I was I was there and this guy named Bobby Starr this old hippie dude who's a friend of ours still in this city said to me so do you play I was like oh no not really you know I'm just like no I'm just drum so he came over to my apartment I was I moved out really young so he came over to my apartment and he was like can you show me some of your songs and so I was a little nervous but I was totally a closet player you know like I wasn't planning to ever be on stage and I played him some songs and then there we were at the Blue Note another night and I'm just like serving these like after hour beers in these teacups and mm -hmm. and like as if it was tea, you know, it's so illegal, so illegal. And I'm 15, which is so wrong. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like child abuse. I don't know what it is. It's like human sex trafficking on a smaller scale or something, but it was, <laughs> it was glorious. But um so yeah so I was doing that and I was there and he was up on stage and he said I'm gonna call Rami up to play some songs and I was just like fuck no you know like mm -hmm. not a chance and next thing you know I, I just rounded up some balls and decided to, to go up on stage and played three songs I had written and then you know it's like that like the three first songs I don't know how everybody else feels as a songwriter but the first few songs you ever write are going to be the most like the saddest most revealing songs of your life in the genre that I write so I just like I wrote about my sister passing away I wrote my dad leaving and all this stuff and I had these bikers and like coke whores and like all these people bawling their eyes out you know and they're coming up to me like just like with their crack addiction arms and just like hugging me and, <laughs> you know just like you you know but like they're just like <laughs> but they were <laughs> but they were all just like super moved by it and it was a feeling I had never had before, obviously. And I had played, actually, I'd played like at my like variety shows when I was younger, like like maybe the year before right. or whatever, but nothing that I'd written, you know, and nothing that was like at a live venue. So that was it. That was the night. Like I went home and I was like, that's what I'm doing. That's all I want to do. So I went to school for a few more years. I went into second year university and then I just stopped. I just started playing music all the time. Oh, frick yeah. That's the beginnings where's the where's that guitar that you had that 150 dollars guitar oh fuck i don't know it's probably long gone but these ones over here are just as shitty <laughs> <laughs> these ones are like pretty much unplayable like those are them but i do have other guitars 
but uh but yeah i still like to collect shitty guitars i used to have like this wall of like crappy harmony and stella guitars that needed work that i never but so yeah the 150 fifty dollar fiesta long gone long gone yeah but i actually i did buy um a yamaha shortly after that that i played on all the time like till like under the pick bar the the wood was worn away and i never used a pick then i just strummed with my hand as most young female singer songwriters do la, la, la. <laughs> and uh and it had like blood, you know, on my, on the guitar. And I, that's a whole other story, but I, I left it when I was on a hitchhike travel with this friend of mine who, when I got back, sold it. <laughs> oh, and just wow. like, so you're an asshole. I either need the money or I need like a new guitar. Yeah. No. What am I going to like no, send like my mafia mob over? Like no one, you know, you can't get that back from someone if they're an asshole. So, so that's where those guitars went to the oh, abyss. Man crazy that that's, but that's that's, that's okay. how of, that's how a lot of people start they, i mean you know the cheap crappy either guitar or piano or whatever yeah yeah but you know what, what i is. i teach yeah. uh i teach guitar lessons to, to beginners and i always tell them don't buy a crappy little guitar to start oh. don't buy like you know you don't have to spend two grand but don't buy like the hundred dollar whatever because if you're playing like you know especially when the action's really high on a guitar or if it like doesn't sound that good or the tuner heads just slip so it doesn't really hold tune you think you sound like shit you yeah. know you think you're not doing well so you do need something that's playable so that you can actually hear what it, your progress and you can actually hear it well so right. but yeah but most people do start with obviously like fiesta guitars <laughs> yeah. fiesta. This, i don't even i don't even know if that's a fiesta. company that exists anymore you know. but this is this is exactly relatable to turntables too yeah, you can go to Canadian Tire and buy that $99 turntable, but right. then you're going to be wondering like, well, why is, why do people spin records? Yeah, why is why yeah. Is all the fuss about cuz this doesn't sound good at all. Well, yeah. no, you spent $99. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I actually had up until I just last Christmas, my partner bought me like a really nice turntable. And up until then in my whole life, I'd only had this one turntable and it was the one that I grew up with, my childhood one, but we have this wicked um little store in town called columbus radio and this you walk in and this it's like you can't even get in there it's just like old mm -hmm. things and tags on like it's just like all cool old weird speaker stereo radio gear and it's just cramped and there's this old dude who like hardly speaks english you know and he's just he's got his log book he doesn't use computer at all he's like well let's say you know and he just like writes oh, something nice. down okay come back and blah 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 and uh so i went there and i kept getting it refurbished and refurbished over time to maintain it but until it had really worn its life out but you're so right because my record sounded like shit on it like it was just yep. the needle was always fucked and and the you know so and now i just my records sound amazing you know i just listen to records all the time and i'm such a vinyl head so it's like having a nice turntable is everything it's same same theory exactly you're totally right mark Cool. What, We're going to cut this out and I'm going to use this as a promo uh, for everything. There's Funky Moose's promo. <laughs> um, what's the last record you spun on the on the player? Um, I actually listened to, what well, you know what? I should just go get it. Do it. Yep. Okay. It'll just be a second. This episode of the Sit Down Podcast is brought to you by Inspired Vapor Company, which is a company that helps people stop smoking. That's right, guys. Um, if you're out there smoking and you're struggling, drop the darts. These guys, Blaine and Kevin Tates, um, who own the company, are, are there. They can answer any of your questions. They can help you transition from cigarettes to vaping and then to nothing. A um, couple of class act guys. Um, I highly recommend you reach out to them. Uh, you can order online. And, and have the product shipped right to you. And they have three locations in Saskatchewan, one in Melfort, Prince Albert, and in Humboldt, but also online at inspiredvaporcompany.com. That's right. So whether you're in the store or online purchases or making an online purchase, use the promo code MOOSE10 for 10% off, you guys. Do you think that plant's real? No. Uh, the plant's totally real. No, it is. Yeah, and you know what else? All right. It, like, I'm, oh my God. Okay, pride of my life. Look at me growing a plant. <laughs> it's a money tree. And if it grows, it's good luck. There you and go. And it almost died and I brought it back to life. Well, when, and, okay. and look at all the success you're having with uh, curbside concerts. I was just about to ask, did you get that plant before curbside concerts? I got it actually in April of 2020. 
So it's right before. Anyway, so this is the record. There you go. It's Diana oh, Ross. Diana Ross. Oh, Ross. Nice. The record's not in there because it's on the table. Right. I smoke and I just ran. Don't do it. <laughs> you do, what are you, but, what's your thoughts on vaping? Uh, you know what? It hurts me. Does it? it Janelle too. It's so it fucked hurt, up. Hurt. Like, like if I take a, a who, like I can smoke a cigarette all day long. Yeah. And if I try one vape e-cig, like I cough for like 45 minutes. Right. But I just wanted to point out endless love, Lionel Richie. Yeah. So beautiful. That makes me think of Happy care. Gilmore. <laughs> nice. nice. That makes recall. you what? Think of Happy Gilmore. My endless, endless love. love. <laughs> when he's like skating on the rink with. Oh, with yeah. The, yeah. With the, so with good. The yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, really yeah. nice one, Joel. I love that. Yeah. And I can't believe you guys thought my plant was fake, though. Having to get, gotten to know me in just a short amount of time, very accurate assessment. <laughs> well, I mean, actually they, never had a plant live until the last year of my life. It's also Zoom, so it's hard to determine if it's plastic. If it, right. or real. What about yours right there? Is that fake? Oh, this oh, is it, definitely like fake. full of dust. And yeah. yeah, that's so old. Yeah, it's fake. You're just trying to it, look like distinguished. Yeah. yeah. Look at us having a table with stuff. Right. Well, I want so here Don't I want that. I have two of those bar fridges, right? Like yeah. And I want one of them right here. I got one that's yeah. a little taller, one that's a little fatter. Yeah, and I high. thought we could like slap all these stickers on there and promote the bands. But then that you we have had to on put the your drink on top of the fridge. And, and then, then Mark just bikosh that idea. I think it's kibosh. I think it's kibosh. Whatever. Kibosh. Bikosh. Sure. Poetic license. Poetic license. <laughs> I think I think you definitely have a beer fridge next to you. Right. At all Better times. Oh uh, yeah, well, even right there. But then I don't know if you can see over here with no. the stickers. I can't. Shot. No, I can't. No, it's my. What beer. is there? The beer fridge. Uh, you guys are making me a little. There. I don't have any beer at home, and I should have had a beer with you guys. This is uh, liquid death. Liquid death. We're drinking water. You ever hear of these guys? No. So they are they drinking water. Green. Yeah, the the black cans are carbonated water, and the white ones are just like flat water. Spring um, water. So they sent False us a, advertisement. Yeah, they sent us a bunch of uh, cans. The whole thing is for um, like death to plastic because Wait, hang on. you can't recycle False plastic. Advertisement? Well, be, well, I should I should reiterate. I should explain that when I see a beer, I want a beer. <laughs> right. right. It's just so the alcoholic in me. But so there, there what happens, of, the false advertisement of it is me thinking, oh, that, now I want a beer. And it's made me want a beer when I didn't. It wasn't well, a beer in the first place. Well, go get a beer. But there are I don't also, have any beer here uh, right now. But there are also people that say that this is an energy drink. But it's not. Wait, I could but, see yeah. that. But I just, I think it's contextual. Like the fact that you guys are sitting there talking about a beer fridge, holding these things that look like beers at all. <laughs> right? I guess so, It's yeah. subliminal. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, what I, I want to ask you about the, uh, the awards behind hey, your left shoulder question. there too. I was going to ask that. Um, I've been really fortunate. I've been really fortunate. I've had a, I've had been gifted a lot of awards in my career. I actually, this is the first time in my life. Like this is my music room slash office. Okay. So really, where do you put your awards? I never yeah. knew where to put them. I never really put them out in my place before, but this room sort of suits it. And it already had that glass little table there. So, so that's where my awards sit. I do have a couple of them actually at the Salisbury house in Winnipeg. Okay. And they have oh. this, like the Salisbury house is like a restaurant, like a burger chain kind of a kind of a cultural yeah like a, like a steakhouse no it's you can get steak there but i think mostly it's just it's just sales it's like a thing you know it's just like one of those like cultural spots that you yeah. know we all like if you're from manitoba you're like oh yeah we, we went to sales we grew we're growing up you know and now it's more like old people eat there but <laughs> but there's a really the people who own it are are awesome and so they have this huge glass area in one of their locations that has like anything to do with Manitoba and sort of um historical poignant music so like there's like Burton Cummings you know the whole guess who thing being from right. here and so there's like that and there's like a guitar that they use and there's like a Neil Young thing and then there's a couple other musicians and myself so a couple of my awards and some of my CDs and stuff are put up in that so oh, if they burn down I don't have those awards anymore Oh, that sucks. Don't care. <laughs> <laughs> don't care. Didn't even like, I don't really like, I think they have the, the, 
the blues award ones, which is always weird to me because I, I, there's blues in my music, but I've always been weirded out by calling being called a blues musician. But the like, so these, some of these up here are actually like really like songwriter of the year awards. Like those are pretty, those are pretty to my heart, but I didn't need yeah. an actual piece of plastic thing that to tell me that I just right. was happy yeah. that I got the award. That's kind of how I feel about like a marriage certificate. Uh, <laughs> I don't need a piece of plastic telling me that I love my totally. wife. Totally. No, yeah. I, I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. I was actually married when I was 23 and divorced by 27. Oh, okay. And the whole time, the whole time I was like, why? Yeah. <laughs> just like, what are we doing? Like well, my whole idea was that I wanted to like hitchhike with him down to, we were in BC and I wanted to hitchhike down to Vegas and do like a fun, cause just for like a fun thing, yeah. you know? And I was like, well, what's the worst thing that'll happen? We get divorced. Uh, you know, like it's just for a relationship. We're just having fun. <laughs> <laughs> and uh and then it ended up being like pretty like a lot more serious especially to him obviously because then it was like a thing like it became a thing and we had like we didn't have like like a wedding wedding which is like a beach little thing with friends right. and then like we didn't send out invitations it was just like if you can make it come down and we had the party at our house and that kind of thing but I was 23 yeah and the whole time I was like I mean again if you knew me at all which I think you're getting to know it's like that's just not my mo like that was just you know, the piece of paper, the, the whole thing, it's, it's in the, in the law and God, the two things I give a fuck about the least, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, why? And then of course, like, you know, it's just like, it's, there's so much more pressure on yourself because now you've done it in front of all these people who are expecting you to have a happy marriage. Like, go oh, yeah. fuck yourself. You know yeah. what I mean? I love it. I love, I, I couldn't agree more. Our wedding yeah. was a good party. So yeah, yeah. That's well, I mean, all it is. It's a party. But right? you can you can do like a celebrate. I I don't know why people don't do that more often. Just like we've been together for ten years, we'd like to have a party. Yeah, yeah. You know, or whatever. We just like to celebrate our love and have like a a, a party. You know, yeah. and you could bring gifts if you want, or you can we can do a social or a raffle or whatever. Yeah. You know, money. But we don't, but I just you can don't, give yeah, us money if money. you want to. Yeah, yeah. We don't need items. We've lived together for ten years. We just need money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We have enough shit. <laughs> we have. We, yeah. That always cracks me up too. Like when you're invited to a wedding, like the obligation that it puts on you is so much shittier than what the person realizes when they've asked you to their wedding. A, if it's out of town, if you're really close with them, you're like, God, you got to break the bank to go, especially these, whoever makes a destination wedding is an asshole. Right? An asshole. Like, if I want to go to, like, the Caribbean, I'm going to go on my own time. Now i got to spend all my money to go for just your weekend? Fuck yeah. you. You know yeah. what I mean? So, anyway, so destination weddings, super selfish, whether they realize unless, it or not. Unless the couple pays for all the guests to, to go there. Which has never happened in the history of happenings. No. <laughs> you know? No, but that would be the never, reason I would go. Never. Never I mean, have I, mean, I ever. Yeah, unless like unless you maybe if you're super super loaded and you could do that, then for yeah. sure invite me to your wedding and pay for everything. So but if, then if you're Joel, like the hotels. If Joel decides to get married, and he says, "Mark, you're coming to my wedding in Mexico," then I'm like, "Sure, get me the tickets." Yeah, right. But you know he won't do that. No. You won't so get then married. you can't go to his wedding, no. and now no. you're an asshole. Like he put that on you. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, but what I can do my is wedding I... and you're like, I don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't want to. <laughs> no. no, I'm good. Here's 50 bucks. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's also years. like, you know, this is the other thing that pisses me off too when we were talking about like, don't give me gifts, give me money or whatever. Yeah. There's that little thing on the invitations that say like presentation or something. Like, I think that's what it's called presentation only or presentation is what it's uh, called. It just means, it just means money. It just means money oh, instead of gifts. Uh, and then the other thing is when you have, they invite you and they give you, now we are registered at Noble and Barnes or whatever is that a store? Barnes and Noble. Barnes you know what I mean? Like yeah. Noble <laughs> and Barnes. Store? <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think of like a gift, like a the bay or whatever. Right, you know what I mean? Right, right. And we're registered at this place. So then you have to go there and pick something that they want and buy it for them. Yep. Why? Yeah. Like I can't get my head around it. I, you know, I just can't get my head around it. You know, it's like, well, buy it yourself or just ask me for money. Right. Yeah. I'll just, I would, I'm, that's how I am too. It's like, here's 50 bucks, a hundred bucks, go get whatever the yeah. fuck you want. Like, I don't you know, what's really nice too, is in the Jewish faith, 
like I'm Jewish, but I don't celebrate it or whatever. But I grew up knowing a lot about the culture, obviously, by, by being in it. Mm-hmm. But uh, so like the Hebrew alphabet, each letter translates to a number value, which is bizarre, but true, right? So Aleph, which is the first one is one, you know, and then two goes okay. on like that. And so Chai, which means life, is two letters that total the amount 18. So really what was common was like, if you're having a, if you're, if you're at a Jewish fe- like event that you need to give a gift to, you'd rather give 18, 30, like division, division, visibles of 18. Okay. So I was like, that's cool. I'll just always give 18. That's what I thought. <laughs> like a true uh-huh. Jew I am. Minimize the purchase. Uh-huh. That's <laughs> and just awesome. like, yeah. But so it's like, it's called Chai, which means life. Like, and then like double Chai would be like 36, et cetera. So it kind of helped people to not have to pay a lot of money. Oh, that's if you smart. Get 36, that was like your double blessings on your family. Here's $36. Oh, that's like the magic number now. And that's 36. That's not even 50 bucks. But I mean, I guess, yeah. I mean, yeah, you just 72, say you could do whatever, right? but. I like it. But I mean, like, you know, if you're really like just a normal human being traveling through the world as we all are. You probably should just toss down a hundred or fifty or something like that. But then it's I just don't I just you're getting married now. I gotta fucking do something about it. Yeah, it's I gotta pay problem. for your fucking life. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like you're getting what? married, not me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like I got a hundred bucks I want to spend on something else. Now I gotta spend it on you. Go fuck uh, yourself. Yeah. <laughs> go fuck yourself. Take your marriage and go to fucking destination somewhere. Okay. I love it. I love it. Um, okay. You so when this episode airs, it's going to be in a couple of weeks here, but you okay. do have a set this evening. Do you not? I do. I actually have a pretty busy weekend. I do. I have a curbside tomorrow too, but I have a, a really fun gig tonight for the Cranky Festival. And the Cranky Festival is um, put together by this wonderful friend of ours. One of our, you know, you ever hear the band, the Ducks? Remember them? I have, I have not. Yeah, the Ducks were huge also. They did really well in the U.S., especially their Grammy nominations and stuff like that as well. But the Ducks were kind of like a rootsy, folk, Celtic, bluegrass, klezmer okay. type of project. Very cool, cool project. And uh, Len Podolik is the, the man who kind of, that's his project. That was his band forever. And they're not really doing that anymore. I think they do reunion gigs once in a while. But Len Podolik is the son of Mitch Podolik, who is the person who started the Winnipeg Folk Fest, who who started the West End Cultural Center, who actually like, he actually helped formulate the Calgary and Vancouver Folk Festivals and things like that as well. You know, he's he's a a huge, yeah, but he's, he's passed now. So he passed two years ago and Len sort of took over the reins by deciding to continue this legacy with the cranky festival and so the cranky festival is just like uh there's there's more to it because um but i don't really understand that part like a cranky is like a storytelling board that you like actually like turn yeah like crank and it kind of it's like a sort of arts and crafts sort of project that can be really fantastical weren't those aren't those like bullshit grinders you ever hear that there used to be, I used to have, my grandpa used to have this little square block yeah. right? and you would crank it and the thing would just continuously crank and he would always get us to crank that as we talked and he would call it the bullshit grinder because then it would just grind up all the bullshit that was coming out of our mouth. Oh, was- okay. Except in this case, actually something's coming out of it. That's yeah. probably right. not bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's yeah. just usual because you spoke a lot of bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, obviously yeah. that thing didn't help because here we are. Yeah, I don't have that thing anymore. So it just fucking spews out of me. You know, now I'm going to have to talk about that. I'm going to have to talk about that tonight at my show. And like, yeah, I'm just glad it's not, you know, God, bullshit. And, but yeah, so it's like this, but it, I think it comes like, I'm not, this is me just talking out my ass now, but there's, you know, I picture like those old plays, like an old play where this, the, the set would change. Like yep. by rolling. Yeah, yeah. Like it was like the cardboard background. Yeah. And, and it would like kind of move yeah. accordingly to the, so it's kind of, I think like that, but people get really creative and are pretty fantastic at them. So at first I think the whole idea was that he was going to team music and a story that the music was telling to have an artist put together a cranky 
with it. Oh. So that was kind of happening at first. That's not what I'm doing tonight, but that's, I think, what the festival is sort of based about, why it's called Cranky Festival. And there's a whole segment to that, you know? So, but for me tonight, I'm just doing a songwriters in the round with uh, some other like blues and folk musicians. And uh, we're playing at the West End Cultural Center, which is actually the venue that his father started. So it's kind of got a nice full circle to it as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. And this yeah, is the, so the fourth annual, right? I think it's the third, but if I, if you're right, then I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I saw on the on the website that it was the fourth. You know, it I could, could be, I think, because I think it, this is probably the first year, they're the second year that it's actually something that's bigger than, you know, like a homegrown grassroots right. sort of situation. Like this is actually like a weekend of really high end music and like re great venues and like maybe a little bit, maybe it's just because, you know, as each year grows, it gets a little bit more established. Right. Yep. But I, if there was a first one that I missed, because I did, I think three, I don't know, maybe two. Huh. But, uh, so I thought maybe this was the third. Okay. But yeah, that's, that's awesome though. Like freaking, we should hmm. try and hit up the next one for sure. Yeah. You know what? Len would be actually a really good person to talk to if you, for an interview, he's extremely interesting and he has so much, cause he also runs Home Roots, the company Home Roots, which is like kind of in cohesiveness with curbside, but it's, I've even played for Home Roots where like they send you to like different households that like have house concert tours in different, like I was in the Yukon and all this okay, shit. It yeah. was, so he's, he's just like jam packed full yeah. of information, stories and, and experience. And uh, he's really oh, interesting. No. And plus, of course, if he speaks about his father, it's an endless, endless well of great stories. Yeah. Right, right, right. I like stories. Yeah. I, I love like it. stories too. <laughs> um, so tell me a story where, how did you guys meet? No, I, I like listening to stories. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, how, well, how uh, did Funky Moose start? Oh boy. Uh, so how did we meet or how did Funky Moose start? Because those are two um, different both. Okay. Well, we met I'll through... probably interrupt just so you know, I always interrupt. It's yeah, totally yeah. good. Um, mm -hmm. So we met through Mark's wife, actually. I used to go to school with her back in the day and they met in Holland. Nope. Well, where'd you meet? Nope. Just I, I nope. Was, Not even going to correct I was in Holland. Oh, they, years. sorry. They met online on one of those virtual dating website no, things there, whatever. <laughs> yeah, right. it was like, he picked her up in the red light district in Amsterdam. Like <laughs> yeah. Was it plenty Let's just of rewrite the story. Let's rewrite it. Yeah, I, yeah. So Mark and his wife met on plenty of fish. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then he, and then he, their date was come meet me after work in the red light district in Holland. And she yes. actually, he thought she would just be at the pub, but she was behind one of the glasses. Ex no, no, that's was, exactly it. It's like it you were there. after her work as in. I've now offended your wife. <laughs> nah, she's got a good sense of humor. Oh, yeah. um, um, I could tell you were Dutch. I could hear it in your voice, in your yeah. accent. I love Holland. I've toured it extensively and I love really? it. Oh. I have. Yeah, I love it so much. I actually, I'm, I like, I, my circuit when I'd go to Europe was Holland, Belgium, Germany, um, Sweden, Italy, and the UK. That was kind of where my pockets were. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, but Holland was always a for sure. And I always, I do really well in Holland. They have their finger on the pulse of like good Americana, Canadiana music. They really do. They know what's up. So I played festivals there. I've played little shows. I've played big shows. But I mean, because it's just two hours from top to bottom to yeah. drive. And they, they like think it's far when you're like, oh, I'm playing in Spikerboard. And it's like way up north. They're like, yeah. you're driving that today? <laughs> I'm like, dude, welcome to Canadian music. I would drive 11 hours to a gig sometimes, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, but, uh, and it's just like, they just are so welcoming and so much fun. And, you know, the beer Hopner. The who? Oh. The beer Hopner. Hopner? Hopner. G-U-L-P-N-E-R. Hopner. Oh, Hulp Hulpner. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go. See, this is yeah. what I that's like my favorite beer in the world. Yeah, yeah, it's a, uh, uh, it's it's brewed in the south of Holland, right? And there's like all these Heineken, and I'm like, fuck Heineken, give me Hopner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone here is like, oh Heineken, you must love Heineken. I'm like, mm, no, it's just an average. So, would, beer. what would you say Heineken is to like in Canadian Pilsner? Pilsner? Yep. Yeah, but it's a little. But in in Holland, it tastes different. Here, it's skunkier, it does. maybe because yeah. of the import. But there, it just tastes yeah. like like a lager. Yeah, it's a. I mean, it's an okay beer in Holland, but it's not. Yeah. Like if you if you order a good beer, you don't get Heineken. Okay, so what's a no, good? No, because beer it's not an import there. 
That's right. Uh, Hert of Nam would be uh, so Duke John translated. Duke John. John <laughs> what Duke? if you walked in and said, can I get a Duke John? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Definitely like, where are you from? Yeah. yeah. I actually Red ended up with like Holland. lots of, I, I, I have, so I've been pronouncing it wrong. How do you pronounce it? Hulpener? Hulpener. Hulpener. Yeah. Hulpener. Um, I have like all that I had, I don't know where it is now, actually, like paraphernalia, like from like oh, yeah. that, like they gave me the sort of like, I don't know what, like a, almost like a paperweight where like it fits um, posters. And so I had okay. all the, the, the coasters and the paperweight that held it and like had yeah. that on like in my sort of array of items from tour all over, you know, in my house. And I had a bunch of like Hulpner, 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 Hulpner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was awesome. your favorite venue to play or most memorable, I guess? You know what? I don't remember the name of the venue, but I played at the Blue Highways Festival in Utrecht. Okay. And, and it was in a huge like theater venue and it was one of the most fantastic experiences. Also in Amsterdam, why Is am I forgetting the name of the- Tivoli in Utrecht? Mm, I don't know. Okay. I actually, just so you know, I have the worst memory. I have to ask the bands I've played with where I've been, like okay. literally in the world where I've been, it's, it's horrible. And it's not because I'm so famous and I've toured so much. It's literally because I have the memory of a mouse. <laughs> But, uh, awesome. but there's, an, there's a fantastic place in Amsterdam. It's a huge venue that's famous and you want to play it and you want to play it. And then I finally got to play it and I can't remember the name of it for some reason, but those were my two in Holland that were my favorite. Sweet. Yep. Are you, so I don't even know if I can talk about this, but were you currently recording at Skull Creek recently? I have not recorded in five years. Okay. Six years. Okay. Why do you ask? I, I, well, I assumed that you were like when Aspen gave the referral, I thought that you guys were like working together at Skull Creek or something. Right. No, I don't make to Saskatoon as much as I'd like to. I haven't been like since 2016, I sort of stopped touring as much, but then I did do like a, like a, like a sort of week run where I just not, not week as in lame week as in one week's time run. Um, and I did play, like, I think I played the basement or maybe I played what's the record shot, like the guitar shop that was there forever that was awesome that's awesome that I, is a venue amps and guitars something guitars and amps it's like an amazing venue i'm just forgetting like i said i couldn't tell you i couldn't even tell you in that's saskatoon how, yeah that's how smart i am yeah wow okay well i'll remember it oh village guitar and village guitar i'm not okay. from saskatoon okay so I, I had know. uh i had a guitar there for sale i think for a little while and oh, it never that, sold that one okay. yeah as musicians it always sucks going there though for only one reason and you get there and you want to spend all the money you made on tour on anything there. They have like the wickedest vintage shit there. It's like amps and guitars and it's just coded. And then it's also a venue, but between sound check and, and playing, you're just like drooling on everything there, wanting it all. And you're everything like, should I walls? spend my money on this? And, but uh, that's a cool place to, to play in Saskatoon. For sure. But so I think that's where I played last time I was there. I played Capital, of course, at one point when shortly after they opened and uh but i i love playing in saskatoon i love touring and i love playing but i'm just i'm just a little tired from like you know you, you don't make as much money as you used to and and it's also pretty pretty like the the grind is is a lot for yeah all my all my bandmates would always be younger than me like you know they're always in their like 20s these wicked dudes who who didn't have families who were willing to hit the road you know Yep. And they'd just be like, just stoked all the time and like, wake up and we found this wicked coffee shop. And then we tur we walked around town and we went to this museum and we're going to this jam that we found that there's this blues jam after the gig. And I'm like sleeping in the hotel until sound check, then like <laughs> going in the van until we leave, you know, just like, yeah, uh, I'm tired, just, you know, leave it all on the stage for that 45 minutes or two hours and then just collapse the rest of the tour. So freaking right. I had to stop. I was, yeah. was going to say, so when Aspen had sent us the referral, it, I remembered when it was, we were actually recently in Winnipeg oh. back in August and we went out there to do an, an episode with Northern Royals and Exo Murda. That's what it was. And I was nice. Those are Aspen and mine. that's, that's when Aspen uh, referred you to us because he was like oh right. if you have time you should hit her up when you were there nice so, i appreciate that is, yeah exo murder is great yeah. northern worlds are great oh nice look at you nice yeah we uh we uh collaborated with northern royals to help them get their ep on vinyl here and yep so for now, you that's awesome yeah, yeah um 
my drummer, Jesse, sometimes is an extra guitar player in Northern Royals too, because he's just one of those assholes that play everything. Hell yeah. Sweet. I hate people like that. <laughs> yeah. There's pick, another pick up this instrument, see if you can play it. Five yeah. Minutes yeah it's like, yeah. oh, I can play in this band and I play in this band. I play banjo in that band. I play guitar in that band. I play drums yeah. in that one. And then sometimes I sit in for on bass on this band. Yeah. I'm like leave some yeah. room for the rest of us, the talented people, yeah. you know? Isn't Aspen just creaming up? Like just creaming up. I think more. I don't know. Aspen, I don't. I Aspen. think Aspen can play multiple instruments, but that's because of like when he's pr helping produce. Like when he's yeah. producing, if he needs to go do something on the drums, he can just go yeah, do but it. It's, but it's 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 backwards though. It's not like you know this is a, this isn't a chicken egg thing. It's like he can play all that, so when yeah. he produces, he can do that. Like right. I mean, obviously, it hones your skills. But I could be a producer for an album and not be able to play the drums and the bass line. Just well, I could play bass a little, I guess, if I needed to. But like, and I can play drums a little too. I was actually in this like duo project where I was fucking around on drums for a bit. Uh, in this like two double chick, we called ourselves um, the Hickeys. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it didn't go far. We didn't. All we got were like phone recordings. <laughs> but uh, we should have just called ourselves the, the Bailers because we bailed was, so hard. I was just about but, to say uh, maybe it was the name. Yeah, the hickeys. Well, I actually, Luke Deset from Whitehorse, you know, mm -hmm. Luke Deset, what, you know, the band Whitehorse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So Luke Deset, he's from Winnipeg originally, and he's a good, old, a good friend of mine. And Joanne, and my friend and I, who were putting together this duo, were like, went on Facebook, like, what should we call our project? And Luke Deset said the hickeys. And we were like, oh, I love it. Because it was all going to be kind of like doo-wop blues, you know, so kind of just kind of worked. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. Um, okay. Is there any, so... Where can we have our guests like directed to to find your music? Right. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a website anymore because why? <laughs> so I just stopped having that. I was like, why am I have? Why do I do this? Um, so uh, and I don't really do much on social media except for Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. But if you want, I mean, I'm all on the things. I'm on the Spotify's and iTunes. And basically okay. when I'm telling someone to check me out, I just say put in Rami Mays in Google search and take it from there. There you, you know, go. you can go to YouTube or whatever, but I don't really keep up with my YouTube page to like update new videos and stuff. So the thing is too, is you could go look up my name and then like click on one song and it could be me like acoustic solo playing like a ballad. And then right. the next video would be like a full rock and roll band killing it on something and I'm playing the right. guitar. So it's like, it just depends what you find. It kind of takes a while, I think, to get the, the scope of what I do, but um. But yeah, I mean, just Google my name and see what happens and check it out. Go down the rabbit hole. It's a fun rabbit yeah. hole. I live it. So trust me. <laughs> right on. We will we'll throw a couple links in the description to get them started, to kickstart them yeah. on, uh, on the... Right on. You know, yeah, I actually, uh, just as a side story really quick. So I hadn't had any physical merchandise since maybe 2000, late 2016, I guess. Because again, why? <laughs> You know, it just didn't see, I wasn't touring as much. I didn't have a new album. It was just sort of seemed like pointless to, you know, cause I'm, I don't, I'm my own label. Right. So I would be putting on my own capital and have all these boxes of CDs and vinyl and then right. not be really performing to people who haven't seen me play before. So, right. I mean, everyone here has seen me play for the most part. Right. You know, so, uh, but then recently about a month and a half ago, maybe, um, Ironstone, the company that manufactured all my CDs. Uh, called me up and said, oh, we, we're just going through the back of the of the shop and we're just trying to clear out some excess stuff. And there's a there's some boxes of your stuff like that we never, you know, like just like the inserts and the this and the CDs and this and that. And we're talking about six albums worth, right? So wow. I was like, oh, okay, well, I'll just come pick it up. You know, I'll just see what's there. Thinking maybe there'd be like a box of something that maybe I could do something with. There, I ended up putting together, like I had to, I put them together myself, but I have over a thousand CDs now. <laughs> Oh, of like wow. different albums <laughs> a thousand a thousand cds so i had this huge i'm having like still it's ongoing all the time now but it's a huge ass cd sale all the time for 10 bucks each cd so for the for the first while when i first started posting that i was like going to the post office every two days with like massive mail outs and like you know and people are paying yeah. for shipping and handling which is always nice um and then even in town you know doing like drop-offs or people coming to my mailbox and picking them up and then at my shows, now I just have like an array of whatever chunk of each kind of CD at the front of the stage and just tell people, come up, grab one, 
throw money down, don't throw money down, throw 20, throw five, whatever. And so that's kind of been fun for me. So if people are into my music, there's a way to contact me through any of my media things and still get CDs. So that's kind of something I wanted to mention because I right. hadn't, who, who still has CDs? Some people, but now I do too. <laughs> <laughs> Well, awesome. chalk, chalk me down for I want one. I want I'll take one of each for sure. OK, I'm, I've run out of some, but I'll give you whatever I've left. The, for 100 percent. And we'll talk about Thanks, that. After. But um, nice. I'm going to say bye to the ones at home. If you can just stay on a little bit longer here. Sure. And uh, thanks for tuning in this week, guys. Bye. Thanks for having me. I super love this. This is fun. I'm going to suggest like 40,000 people you should do this with. Love it. Love it. Okay. Awesome. Appreciate you. Love you, Saskatoon. to the coldest wind You can play the scene when you know you've sinned You can hang on tight when the rope grows thin But you can't hide the tracks of where you've been You can ride the wave in a broke down boat Hold on tight and hope you float You can fight the cold without a coat But you can't get back the soul you sold I'm no hero, no I ain't Here I go Standing in the rain I'm no hero not today I'm my own ball and chain I'm my own ball and chain Wait your turn and stand in line You can take what's yours and what's mine You can change your mind upon a dime But you can return borrow time your demons tooth and nail you can wait on court to set your bail you can try again on those you fail you can't change the writings of your tale